In this video, I want to talk about your words. After I heard about this meme that I'm about to show you here, some thoughts went through my mind here. Nestle's CEO says water is not a human right. And I'm sure that they, there are other psychopaths that believe the same thing. That water is not a human right. So that you don't have a right to go get water. You have to go through a corporation, a government, someone or something else to get water. And... It made me think of being judged by your words because I thought of the rich man in Lazarus where the rich man was in hell wanting just a drop of water and I was thinking that's this guy right here you see Jesus says this in Matthew 12 verse 36 and 37 but I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So I imagine that that fellow there, unless he repents, is going to end up like the rich man in Luke chapter 16, wanting just a drop of water, where... He is with, willing to withhold water from people because it's not a right for them to have. So God is going to do the same to him. Pause for dramatic effect and so you think about that. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe it ends up getting you to look at yourself a little bit, right? Thinking about the things... You've said and done, and kind of makes you think about what Jesus says in chapter 7 of Matthew. A lot of people just quote this first verse here. Judge not that ye be not judged. Well, you're going to be judged no matter what. It's not as if you don't judge anybody that God won't judge you. You know, you got to finish what is said after this. It says, For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. So you see, it's not saying not to judge. It's saying, do a righteous judgment. Don't be a hypocrite. You know, when you point the finger, there's three fingers pointing back at you kind of thing, right? So if you're going to judge somebody, judge them righteously. Because in the same way you judge them, you're going to be judged. You judge without mercy, you won't get mercy, right? Especially if you've done the same thing that you're condemning someone else for, right? It even talks about the hypocrisy and the next couple of verses here, three verses or so, it says, And why beholdest the, thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? And that's basically saying, hey, you're... Uh, your brother has a twig in his eye, and you have a branch in your eye, right? Yet you're sitting there condemning him for this twig in his eye, but he's not going to listen to you because you got this big branch sticking out of your eye, right? He goes on to say, Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite! First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then sh thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Makes you want to ask God, where am I being a hypocrite? Where am I judging unrighteously? That I, that I can correct that, right? And I hope he corrects us on these issues. But you can see how God is going to judge us. He's going to judge us by the light we were given. So if we understand things to be wrong, 
yet we do them anyway, he's going to judge us accordingly. But if we don't understand that these things are wrong, like a child would under, wouldn't understand, he's going to judge them accordingly. Right? So, where do you stand here? I'm going to bring up some other passages here. In Mark chapter 6, verse 11, it says, And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you, when ye depart, then shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. So you see they're, they're judged based on the light they're given. Sodom and Gomorrah didn't have Jesus walking among them and sending out his disciples to preach to them. Right? Right? His, he says in another passage, whoever hears you, hears me. So if they reject you, it's not you they're actually rejecting. They're rejecting me. Uh, and that would be what Jesus is saying. You know, not talking about myself, just to be clear. So, since they had this greater light than Sodom and Gomorrah, it's going to be rougher for them. And if you look into the discovery of Sodom and Gomorrah by Ron Wyatt, you'll see that there's nothing left of that area. There's just this kind of ash-like substance with these little sulfur balls all over the place that you can pick up and light. It's as if these sulfur balls just rained over this area, and there's nothing growing there or living there. It's pretty crazy, right? And for these people, it's going to be worse for them than it was for Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, that's pretty rough, right? We have the same thing said over here in Matthew 11. At verse 20, it says, Then began he to unbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Cho, Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. So you see here how God is just, where they didn't have the same benefits as Tyre and I mean Tyre and Sidon didn't have the same benefits as Chorazin and Bethsaida or Chorazin. Not sure how to actually say that one. So we see here how much light do you have? I bring this up because uh, there's people who call themselves Christians. Mainly it's Catholics, because there's more Catholics than any other uh, denomination that, that believe that we're judged by our works. And they're going to have to bring that to God when they're judged. They're going to be judged by their words. Their words said, I am going to be judged by my works. So God's going to go, okay, let's, let's see your works. And of course, these people, what are they going to do? Well, they're going to do the same thing that is, happens here in Matthew chapter 7, where he says in verse 22, he says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works? I mean, that's like the Catholic Church in general, right? They do their exorcisms, they do a little bit of the prophesying, but, you know, they have a lot of charity work and stuff, right? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me ye that work iniquity. You see, you bring forth your good, and that, that's all good. Yeah, you did good. But what about your bad? Your iniquity. You're judged by your works. Do you Are you going to be found perfect? Because if you're not perfect, you're going to be found wanting. 
you're you're not going to pass judgment. So think about your words, where you're you're telling God and you're making a witness, as you you've typed it out online, you've made videos, you've talked to people like me on 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 a like Skype and Zoom or what have you, or on the phone or face to face, and there's plenty of witnesses where you say you're going to be judged by your works. Okay. Are you prepared to be judged by your works? Are you going to be found blameless? Without sin? Especially if you were to die, God forbid, right now. Could you say, oh, I'm going to be fine if I'm judged by my works. I'm good. I'm gold. Are you really that sure of it? I know with Catholics, they have uh, the sin of presumption, right? So... There's no assurance, right? At least for them. And, uh, yeah, I, I think this would get you to think about this in the same way that Paul talks about the law, where he says that the law, you know, not try not to sin, doing the religious rituals, doing the good works, you know, the works of the law, he was saying that was to get you to look to Christ. That's what it was supposed to get you to do because the law wasn't there for you to keep it, to establish your own righteousness, to save yourself. It was to show you your sin, but also your inability to keep the law. Because if you sin at one point, you're guilty of the whole thing. You see, a lot of these Catholics, along with the Seventh-day Adventists, what they'll end up doing, and I fear for them, is they'll bring up James chapter 2 and they'll say we're justified by our faith and our, our works, not faith alone, right? But in the context of what James is talking about, is right here. Verses 8 through 13, he says, If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin, and are convinced of the law as transgressors for whosoever shall keep the whole law yet offended one point he is guilty of all so you see how you have to be perfect if you break one sin you're guilty of breaking the whole law can you say that you're you're going to pass that judgment he goes on to say for he that said do not commit adultery said also do not kill now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that hath showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Now, how merciful are, have you been, Catholic, Seventh-day Adventist, when it comes to the law and the people who preach to you grace. I mean, all the Catholics and Seventh-day Adventists I talk to about salvation say I'm condemned. Even though they don't know me, they can't say any sin. Uh, basically, the Catholic is like, yeah, you're condemned because you're not Catholic. When that's not a requirement of salvation. And the Seventh-day Adventist is like, well, you, you, you do work on Saturdays. So... Yeah, you're condemned. You know, you broke one law, you're guilty of the whole thing, you're you're condemned. Right? And unlike Jesus, who told the, the Pharisees, hey, he without sin cast the first stone. They have no problem casting the stones of condemnation on you, that you're condemned, that you're damned. Yet, by doing that, they're going to have the same judgment put upon them. Well, they say, I'm condemned for these things. Well, then God's going to look at their lives and say, oh, you're not perfect. You see these sins here and these sins here? Well, you're damned. You're guilty of the whole law. And I got a phone call, so I'll jump right back into this. Okay, continuing here. 
So we see here uh, an example of how the adulteress was caught in the act and Jesus was just like, I forgive you, right? So if you're not that forgiving, what makes you think you're going to receive that forgiveness? Really think about this. You're going to be judged by every idle word. And then you quote James here. Now, the Seventh-day Adventist isn't really being so much of a hypocrite because they understand the context is about the law. And it says to be justified by your faith in the works. It's talking about works of the law. But a Catholic will read this and say, yo, yeah, you got to have good works. That's what it's talking about, good works. When in the context of what he's saying here is works of the law because good works are part of the law. The law is about not sinning, doing the religious rituals, and doing the good works. All summed up with what? Loving God with all you got and love your fellow man as yourself. So the Catholic will say, oh yeah, this, so you see, you got to have the works. And it's like, okay, but this is saying the works of the law, but out of the other side of your mouth, you're saying we're not justified by the law. So you, so you contradict yourself. It's, Catholics are just programmed to uh, say James 2 to any, anyone who's a Protestant because uh, it irritated Luther. So they think if they just say that to you, it's going to irritate you. It's like, no, I'm fine with what this says. It, you know, it's God's word, right? But uh, just to rewind before I wrap this up. Every idle word. That men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Every idle word. We see something going on here. I'm not going to read this whole thing here. But just to uh, make the point of what was going on with Lazarus and the rich man. So at verse 19 it says, There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen. Sounds kind of like the, the Catholic priest right there. Kind of weird. And fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Oh, that's strange. God knows the beggar's name, but not the rich man's name. All right. Which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked the, his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off in Lazarus in his bosom, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. So we see here that the people in hell are getting what they justly deserve. For he didn't care about Lazarus in life. So this rich guy, I don't have a name for him. He's not going to get cared for in the next life. Right? So it, it, it's teaching you to sacrifice this life. And the comforts of this life for others. Right? Because if you're willing to give up everything in this life, well, God's going to be willing to give you everything in the next. But if you're not, well, it's a different story now, isn't it? So you, you see that the people who go through the tribulation, the great tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, they're going to be a lot like this guy. Like James is talking about, the respecters of persons. They'll be saying, water is not a human right. And control your energy consumption while they're flying around, drinking all the water in their jets. 
you're sitting there just wanting a, a thimble full of water and uh, turn your fan on a little bit, right? Because it's, it's hot. But nope, you got to conserve the energy. You can't be using it because they need to use it. Well, I say tough it out if you, you're those that are left here and have to go through it because they are going to get what they deserve and you will be comforted. Just stay strong. Don't take that mark. Be willing to suffer and die. And give up this life so that you can have the true life. But, uh, yeah, you probably all thought of these things yourself. But uh, I just felt like talking about it. Because this is... Oh, yeah. I just got to decide which one I'm going to use as a thumbnail here. Probably put this. This one. All right. I've decided. Thanks for watching. Take care. That fella couldn't join the church. He couldn't join the church. He couldn't get baptized. He couldn't get baptized. He woke up with God. He woke up with the devil. Are you saved? So that fella didn't take the sacraments, didn't take the sacraments. Didn't say the rosary, didn't take the rosary. Didn't tithe, didn't tithe. He went to heaven, he went to hell. You say? Didn't keep the law, he didn't keep the law. He broke the commandments, he broke the commandments. He didn't keep the golden rule, he didn't keep the golden rule. He woke up in glory, he woke up in the pit. Are you saved? You're saved, but you're not saved. You're over here or you're over here. You sure ain't in the middle. He said, Lord, remember me, thou comest by kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and said, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be saved. It's like that. <laughs> you have been saved? If you ever saved, you were saved like that.